This is quite interesting. It's a failed Osram module. And it's got, uh, I think it's about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18 LEDs in it. And when it's lit, only eight of them are actually lighting and they're pulsing on and off. It's also worth mentioning that this is just a two core flex into this, just live and neutral. Uh, so I'm guessing that they've gone for a double insulated approach because certainly the plastic module here, uh, the driver seems to be in a module that is completely separate to the metal frame. And it's quite a heavy unit. I've written the weight in the back here, 340 grams. You're thinking, I wonder how long these last, because is that really one of these ecologically sound things where once it fails, if you can't just swap components in it, you're throwing away a really hefty chunk of metal. So let's plug it in. I'm going to warn you in advance that this is going to strobe. Uh, ignore the readings on the meter because it's just going to be gibberish because it is strobing. It's a, an uneven load. So I'm going to carefully poke these into the... Uh, Spingy connectors here, making sure I don't get my fingers in as well. And it's starting to pulse. So, uh, yes, that's not terribly helpful. It's a common failure mode of LED lamps like this. So let's uh, investigate this. Let's uh, get the spudger and see if I can actually get in here. I may not. I may have to go in from the back. Oh, that just popped out, actually. And that popped out. That's good. This is promising. Now it's not promising. Now I've got two out, it's doing that thing where the third one is always that bit trickier. And then the other ones pop back in. Uh. Oh, it's out. It's a standard uh, collimating sort of arrangement of optical collimating system. I'm seeing the black spot of death in here. And one LED. They're quite unusual LEDs, actually. Let's take a. Let's just zoom in just a little bit. Hopefully, that's not too saturated out. Um, the LEDs have really big chips in them. I don't know if you can see that. I'll turn this light on. Oh, no, that's going to swamp it even more, isn't it? Uh, each one looks as though it may have two chips. Are they wired as a series? A couple of series strings. That would explain why so many were out. Actually, no. I'm not sure they are actually. I think they are actually wired as individual. Um, as one just continuous serial string. I think there's two chips in each of these LEDs. There's one way we can find that out. If I put the power supply on and I set the voltage to about just under the voltage of one LED. So let's see, the black wire is going to this first LED. And yeah, that is the negative. Always worth double checking. Uh, what can I poke in with? I'll put this on the screwdriver. And I'll try and make a connection onto that end of the LED there. Oh, I've just pushed the LED right off. Well, that kind of messed up that. I wonder if it would still light, though. I don't think it would, given what I've just done to it. But you know what? Let's give it a go anyway. Uh, I can see that the uh, track is coming over here, so let's just scrub through the metal and uh, make a connection and try and get this to light. It probably won't now, because, uh, because of what I've done. It's certainly not lighting at the 3-volt region. No, even if it's two chips, it should have lit by now. So I, I have either that was a dead LED or I've, uh, or I've messed it up. Um, are there any others that I can actually test? Hold on, I'll bring this meter in and uh, probe them. The fact that so many were out, I want, that suggests they've failed in a short circuit man. I wonder if that's a deliberate arrangement they've got inside to actually... That is a dead short circuit. Hold on, I'm just going to zoom back out again. So this LED is just absolutely dead short. That's a dead short. These are all feel dead short. Even the one that's slightly grilled. This one is not feel dead short. That may be one of the working ones. I wonder if that is a deliberate system whereby if one LED fails, because the driver can drive a lot in series, uh, it just uh, 
So this one has a diode. Oh, that's interesting. It looks as though it's got a diode, standard diode, configured in the reverse polarity to the LED chips. Right, let's uh, see if I can probe with the power supply into that one. I've forgotten which LED that was now. I think it was this one. Uh, let's uh, put it up to about... 3 volts and probe in. Nothing. Uh, let's turn that up to about 5 volts, which is the point at which uh, two LEDs would start conducting. Oh, there it goes. It is. You can see it's very distinctly two LEDs. Uh, two fairly large chips inside, and it started conducting at 5 volts. That does suggest that it is indeed uh, two chips. So they're basically, uh, because there's 18 LED, uh, of the packages, there's 36 chips in series. So what's the combined voltage of that going to be? It's going to be, being in the old calculator, uh, 18 times 2 is 36, times about, say, 3 volts minimum. It's going to be about 100 volts um, across this whole array when it's lit. I'm guessing that the fact uh, so many have failed is why the thing was strobing, though, because uh, it won't like the fact that uh, it's seeing a much lower voltage than it desires in normal operation. So let's get the back off and see if we can uh, take a look at this power supply. The LEDs have failed quite widespread there, so that is the main sort of failure thing. It's a lovely, you know, casting this like so many of these are. It's just, they're so chunky. It just seems wasteful that, you know... Once it's used, it, it gets binned, you know, if it's, uh, once it fails. You consider how, how little material there was in traditional lamps. Well, that is just quite interesting. Can we get this out? This might be being held in by the wires. I have to say the wires are also got The insulation has gone very brittle. They've obviously seen a lot of heat in here, which is, of course, why most LEDs fail. Let's uh, crop that off and see if we can pop this module out. Uh, I'll also probably pop the LED uh, panel off. So here's the module. It is all double insulated all the way through. Let's start with this. So the... Uh, I'll just cut these wires here. Interesting arrangement. They've stripped this back. They've sleeved it. And then they've actually put it into the crimp. Uh, the actual Crimpton uh, grommet quite close to the actual sleeve of the cable itself. So this is glued in. Spudger might be better for this. Let's see if I can uh, liberate it. I'm already seeing suppression components suggesting, you know, well, it being a sort of higher profile brand, they are making an effort to make it uh, more radio friendly, so to speak, more compliant with uh, noise standards. Uh, this is not going to be easy to get out. I may have to just push it from the other side. If this works as well, it might not either. Hmm. Squeaky, squeaky noises. Oh, there it goes. So what do we have? We have the mains come in to this big fat capacitor, which I suppose it really I should discharge it. That would definitely be a sore one if I, if it was charged. It's discharged. Uh, the capacitor is quite a high looking value. Um, I can't see it. 100 microfarad. 100 microfarad, 160 volts. So that's actually in the output, suggesting that this is using a um, fairly a good power factor type unit then, if that's the case, because it's not using the capacitor in the input. That is definitely the one that's feeding the LEDs. We've got a little inductor here, which is also going out to LEDs from that capacitor. It's a, a 
Julian Doctor almost like a common mode suppression choke going out to LEDs. That must be to remove the last remnants of the uh, ripple from the high frequency supply. There's a chip here which is almost certainly the switch mode power supply chip. I'm able to read this. It's absolutely densely packed with text. It says MP4021. That seems familiar. MP4021-A. Don't know if you can see that there. Um, quite a lot of surface mount components in the back. We've got the mains coming in. We've got uh, what looks like suppression components. Well, that's actually no. No, I'm talking crap. That those little capacitors are actually more filtering the output to the LEDs. So here's the mains coming in. The first thing it does is it goes through a small fuse here. Uh, then it goes through a common mode suppression choke, then a filter capacitor, then just a series choke. Then this component here is across the bridge rectifier, so that looks like it's probably a metal oxide varistor. Through bridge rectifier, a filtering capacitor, then what's this big uh, transistor type component? SVF4N8OF F cell. Could that be? Is it an active uh, switching device or is it just purely a transistor? Is it? I wonder if it's got active circuitry in it. Then ultimately, it's uh, switching this transformer. Uh, which then converts it to the uh, uh, current limited output uh, with this big capacitor across it. So uh, what about the circuit board? That is quite densely packed in the back with extra circuitry. As you know, it's got a fairly high number, high count of uh, surface mount components. It looks a fairly comprehensive uh, switch mode power supply. So let's get this out. This is going to be goopy with a thermal compound. It's just that, you know, I've been trying to get uh, some of the local guys that work in street lighting to uh, give me one of the first LED fixtures that fails. But all the failures so far, and there have been quite a lot, they've, they're so new that they've been failing within their warranty periods. So that's uh, probably going to annoy companies like Philips that have had little failures early on. Right, okay, well here's the first surprise. Is this going to be some... This isn't an aluminium core PCB as I thought it might be. It looks like a standard FR4 type material. The heatsink compound has gone quite dryish in the back of that. But I wouldn't have thought that would be... Unless it's especially thermally uh, conductive laminate. Is it brittle? They're usually the clue is that they're usually quite brittle compared to the traditional fiberglassy laminate. Uh, it is fairly brittle feeling, uh, and the. Tracks in the front that the LEDs are soldered onto are large area islands of copper with tiny little gaps between them, and it basically it follows an outline with wide clearance around the screw holes. They are going for a double insulated approach here. That's probably why they've used this material that is not the aluminium core, because with the aluminium core, all you have between it and the circuitry is that thin wafer of fiberglass, and there are instances that that has been failing when an LED is burnt up. It's uh, perforated that fiberglass and shorted out onto the aluminium backplate. But you'd think, you know, that this would limit the thermal conductivity, but I guess ultimately they've, you know, it's Osram, you'd expect them to have tested that, and I'm sure this has probably put in a good amount of service. These things are so stylish, aren't they, these? And very musical. Hmm. But yes, it's an interesting approach. The fact that it, they've really gone for the double insulated approach, complete with, with this, uh, where the cables go through, it's got this layer of plastic going through to physically mate with the back of the circuit board and make sure there's nowhere 
that the copper uh, comes, that the wires can come in contact with the metal casing at all. So very interesting, and definitely a more serious power supply than many of the other lamps. But uh, I wonder what the life, I wonder how long this did actually last before the LEDs started going out. And I wonder how many LEDs can go out before it starts doing the sort of, the strobing, it detects it as a sort of shunted load and starts pulsing. But um, yeah, interesting, definitely nice to see inside a higher profile brand.